Good afternoon, everyone. Andy Jacob here with the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. We have a very interesting show today. I am so excited that I've been able to book Mr. Jeremy Foley. And Jeremy is the Chief Executive Officer of PX3 Medical. And we've had so many people reach out to me on the show and they say, hey, Andy, you need to bring an expert in on healthcare staffing. And the reason why is so many people are interested in what's going on through the pandemic with the staffing and whether there's enough staffing, whether there's not enough staffing, who is the go-to person to get all the answers regarding this staffing in the healthcare field. And we reached out to Jeremy to be our go-to expert about what's going on. And his company is really amazing at PX3 Medical. He really has a unique selling proposition and the unique selling proposition is that he provides extreme efficiency. And as you know, by watching and listening to the show, we always talk about being efficient. And if you're looking for medical staffing, Jeremy's process is really remarkable. We're going to let him explain it a little bit. But Jeremy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Andy. It's a pleasure and great to talk with you. This is really great to have you on the show, Jeremy. As you know, like like all the interviews, we start with pulling the lens back to 30,000 feet so that our viewers and our listeners can understand what you're doing at PX3 Medical. Sure, absolutely. Well, the 30,000 foot view is really quite simple. You know, we are helping healthcare organizations, leaders around the healthcare sector find the top 1% of talent, even in a candid short marketplace. I love it so much. And you provide an opportunity in this healthcare staffing arena to provide an efficient opportunity for your clients. And let's get into that because that's the thing that really resonates with me, why you're different than almost everybody else out there. Hmm. Well, it's, it's funny, Andy. You know, I think a lot of even... Um, uh, established stalwarts in the recruitment industry, guys that have been around since the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, with you know many, many decades of experience. You know, they they at times I think rely on their experience to to help a client. When in reality, a client doesn't care about any of that. A client wants the outcome, right? They they want the position filled, plain and simple. But at the end of the day, it's got to be done quickly. And the first step in, in helping our clients become more efficient is really understanding who they are and, and what they really need. There's a lot of people to choose from them in the market. And the reality is most of those people aren't going to be a good fit for the culture or even the community that these employers represent. Jeremy, that makes all the sense in the world. And you have a great background, great experience, many, many years going back to 2007. We'll get into the entrepreneurial journey just a little bit. But let's talk a little bit about the onboarding process at PX3 Medical. So when someone reaches out to you, Jeremy, or a member of your team, and how does that conversation go? What does it sound like to you so that you can sort of get the flavor of what they need so you can deliver this efficient result? Sure, sure. Well, I want to take a step back, actually, before we get into that. And I want you to understand the philosophy behind PX3 Medical, which is actually P times three. And so what it is, it's three Ps. It's people placing people. So when we talk about an intake call, a discovery call, that initial triage discussion with, with a client, you know, we have no idea what's going on. They're going to come to me and say, Jeremy, we need an emergency medicine physician. We're dying. Okay. Or you know what? We've got a chief operations officer role that is going to be instrumental in, in applying new initiatives and taking over existing projects. So, but by definition, we have no idea what's really going on behind the scenes. We don't know the people yet. And so before we ever invest too much effort on either the client side or even our side, we've got to get to know the people. And that's where the PX3 principle comes from is, you know, once we can understand the people, we can understand the problems and hopefully present the, the, the solution to solve all those issues. I love it. So for the people that don't really understand or haven't been involved with this type of recruitment process, staffing process, let's explain it out a little bit. So when you speak to a potential client, you've got this people placing people, which I really love, the PX3. And what happens is 
they'll tell you what they need. Mm -hmm. And then how does it work for the people that haven't gone through the process? Do you go out and handpick people for them? Do you make phone calls out to people that look like they would fit the role? Or do you already have a roster of people that you can select? Or is it a combination thereof? Sure, sure. That's a great question. And that's actually a, one of the most common questions we get from, from employers. So we, we do not have a stable of people to choose from. And the reality is what I've learned after 14 years in healthcare recruitment, Andy, is guess what? People go stale. Okay. And the reality is having a huge database of people, which I do, isn't going to solve the problem because every client that we work with has a unique challenge and a unique difficulty they're trying to overcome. And just having somebody with the right credentials, you know, the right discipline even, isn't necessarily going to present the, the solution to that problem. So we absolutely do, again, going back to the initial procurement, focus on people that are going to meet their exact criteria. And sometimes that cr criteria is very stringent. And that's actually something we even encourage our clients to do. It's like, hey, you know, give us an impossible task that 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 one percenter type person, and let's go after that, and let, let's get that person because everybody else, and, and it's it's no disrespect, is inferior at that point, right? Why would we settle for anything less than a superstar? That makes all the sense in the world, and you're known at PX3 Medical for providing the superstars, for finding the superstars, for, for giving your clients exactly what they want. But let's reverse engineer it on the other hand. So let's say I believe that I'm a superstar in the healthcare field. Let's say I'm a C-level exec. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, I'm thinking, hey, maybe I'm thinking about, you know, making a move or maybe I'm thinking about it's time for me to transition or I want to move my family to a different part of the country and maybe start a new chapter. Do those types of people's reach out to you and you put them sort of in a database or is that something you don't do? Because that's something that's a little confusing for people that haven't experienced sort of the healthcare staffing uh, opportunity. Sure, sure. I think that's a great question. And absolutely, the situation that you just detailed is very common in the marketplace. It's something that we've seen uh, both, uh, you know, during COVID times and now as we're kind of in the, in the exit phase here, you know, we're seeing people, uh, their motivation for employment and employment changes is, is different, right? You know, we're, we're no longer motivated purely by the financial aspects or, or, or stature or bragging rights. It's no, more now about the, the quality of work-life balance and, you know, finding a, a situation whether you're a healthcare provider or a professional, we are not going to be uh, taken advantage of or exploited. And, and the sad fact is we have a lot of even premier institutions in this country right now that are doing a terrible job of managing their burnout and, and their overworking of their professionals. And you know what? The fallout is going to be real scary. Some of these people are prepared. Others are not. I'm lucky to have a lot of clients that have, have got that, that foresight to say, hey, we know this is coming. We're trying to get out in front of it, or it's here right now. And we're trying to be proactive before we get caught in a really serious position. You know, Andy, oftentimes we work with employers that are in communities or, or in environments that are really not attractive. Okay. These are not prime locations. These are not prime positions. And the sad fact is it's very difficult to attract top talent. So they have to make the most of their retention strategies and mechanisms to make sure they don't lose any of the talent they have, whether it's mediocre or not. So, you know, to, to go back and, and answer your question, you know, if somebody approaches me uh, either just out of curiosity, or they want us to target a direct market for them, we absolutely can do that. But the, the, the fact of the matter is, you know, oftentimes employers are looking for something, again, very specific, which we're encouraging. And even if that candidate is a superstar, it may not meet our own client's criteria. So, you know, at that point, obviously, we have to, you know, just basically put them on the shelf until something comes up. But, you know, if you're a superstar, you're probably going to command a lot of attention, and maybe you don't even need my help. I see what you're saying. So, Jeremy, that makes all the sense in the world. So when a client speaks to you, they're looking for someone immediately or they need someone to fill a role. Do you discuss with them the psychological aspect of the people? Is it ever does the conversation ever go like, Jeremy, you know, we need the guy or the gal that is top notch. We need the guy or the gal that can fill this job. But we also need someone with a really great attitude or we need someone that can really like set the corporate culture. Is that is that a conversation that always happens? You know, um, 
part of my initial triage process with a client is to establish what their dream candidate looks like, Andy. And it's funny how often during that, that, that discussion that, in my opinion, the requirements they're looking for should be inherent in the position, period. Things like you're talking about, somebody who's a fit for our culture, somebody who empowers those around them, whether it's their subordinates or superiors, um, somebody who's driven to do more than just the confines of, of, of the role itself. And, and, and clients come to me and say, you know, we want these kind of abstract things. And I'm going, well, that should be everybody. Right? That's not something special. That should be anybody and everybody. Because once you start to remove some of those defining criteria that you or I think are probably, again, inherent in any solid candidate, excuse me, once you've removed that criteria, what do you have left? I mean, you really have an average or below average candidate. And is that even somebody you want to hire, let alone even interview? That makes all the sense in the world. And that's very fascinating. You know, one thing that you've been able to do at PX3, which which really caught our attention, and one thing that really separates you again, is everybody needs to be more efficient. The, the, the marketplace is demanding it. And the marketplace is saying, you know, why would I look at 10 candidates, for example, when I can look at one that Jeremy has selected for my particular needs. So let's talk about that because that's the way in which you've really been able to really segment out your business from so many others in the space because you deliver efficiency. You don't yeah. deliver maybe 10 or 20 candidates and have your client spend all this time, energy, and effort, you know, going through all 10 or 20. You deliver like the one that you feel is the best one. So let's talk about that. And where did that come from? Sure. Well, actually, it came through trial and error, <laughs> as all great things do, right? So, you know, early in my career, I, you know, I, I got to a point where I was sending, you know, three, four, five, six people that, you know, they were all good, they were all worthy, but at the end of the day, we found that maybe we were we were focusing our efforts on the wrong people. You know, we get all the way to the point where we're ex uh, extending an offer and the candidate declines, and now we're going back and starting over and, and people have fallen off and just, you know, all these things that, that the employers struggle with themselves and even with agency assistants may continue to have those same trends. So, you know, I was lucky to have a great, uh, actually technically two mentors early in my career teach me the good, the bad, the ugly, and, and yet the learning process continues. You know, I've got you know, well over 14 years now in the industry, having helped thousands of different clients in a variety of settings. But the efficiency thing really comes down to, and I don't mean this to be greedy, but, you know, my desire to succeed, plain and simple. Because when I succeed, my client succeeds and everybody wins. And so I think if you're truly focused on achieving the outcome the client wants, efficiency becomes second nature. It becomes a mandatory in the process. And so when I talk about even our very, very first conversation with an employer in establishing their criteria, we're at that very, very first stage, the foundation, if you will, establishing efficiency protocols by very simply eliminating the, 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 the chaff from the wheat, right? We're not looking at every possible option we are looking at those one or two people. Well, how do we get there? Well, we look for those superstar qualities, right? We look for the people that meet the cultural and community needs. We look at the people that, you know, want to do more or have a long-term vision that this employer also shares or vice versa. So, you know, at the end of the day, it starts in the beginning and focusing on what you really want. So often, Andy, what happens is employers, you know, unfortunately due to that dynamic, they're out in the market, not only looking for good people, but they're trying to promote their own organization, right? The problem is it's very difficult to, to self-promote, but also filter and screen people. Because when I'm talking to you and say, hey, you know what, Andy, I want to bring you on as VP of market here at PX3 Medical. Well, guess what? I want to promote all the great things that you're going to be interested in. But at the same time, I'm, I'm trying to be careful to also you know, validate you and your credentials and your experience to make sure if you're a good fit. But it's nearly impossible to both screen and promote at the same time, which is really one of the main advantages of working with an independent firm like mine. Guess what? We're not biased. We're third party 
intermediary. And even though we're acting as an ambassador for our clients, we don't have any vested interest in that particular candidate because the candidate has not proven worthy yet. We have to put them through the test. And so by the time they go through that you know, trial and those tribulations and end up on the employer's desk, you know, all the filtering, all the screening is done. And now the employer can focus exclusively on promotion rather than having to filter out that person to make sure, hey, are they even viable for the bare necessity of this position? And again, I, I, I don't mean to make any disparaging comments uh, to, to any other recruiters in the industry. You know, they're, like all things in life, there's a spectrum, you know, uh, and I'm not going to get into that on this discussion, but, you know, not everybody has that same process. There are a lot of firms that have a lot of success by the shotgun approach. Like, hey, here are 10 people that, that might meet your needs. Call us if we can help. Call us if you make a hire. Call us if you need any further detail. And actually, you know what? To be perfectly frank, Andy, there's a lot of employers that want that type of relationship, that, that want somebody to just provide the activity, the paper, the resumes, if you will. And, and I would say to those people, if that's what you're looking for, you need to make sure you have a firm who also shares that same type of acceptable relationship. You know, one of the main differentiators between who we are and what we do here is not our ability to generate candidates or activity or even advise our clients on best practices. What we do uniquely here compared to any other firm is we're here to help you make a hire. And, and that in itself is, is worth an entirely different conversation, which we don't have time for, but I have to make that distinction. I love it. It makes all the sense in the world. It's really important. You know, on the dot-com magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series, we get to speak with so many successful entrepreneurs throughout the world, and we're so excited about that. And one thing that comes clear is that specialists win and generalists lose, and you really have a specialty in what you do, and you believe in the way in which you provide this efficiency to your clients. You know, when we speak, Jeremy, to so many people all over the country, all over the world, but in particular, the United States right now, everybody tells me throughout the United States that there's now hiring signs on the corner and everybody's looking to hire and it's hard to hire. And, you know, it, is it the same way in healthcare or is it magnified in healthcare? And what's that look like, generally speaking, in the healthcare industry? <laughs> wow, that is a loaded question. <laughs> You know, this is something that could be debated for the next 12 months among every expert in healthcare. And the reality is, you know, you cannot paint this with a, with a broad stroke. You just cannot. You know, every market right now is experiencing something different. And within those markets, you know, healthcare is, is, is kind of neat because there's so much. There's so much in healthcare, right? You've got people that are coming in and, and working fresh out of high school in these very entry level, you know, uh, foundational type roles. You have people that have been in executive or leadership positions for multiple decades, and, and you have the entire spectrum almost of our entire educational and professional realm. And so, because of that, when you come to me and ask me, you know, you say, Jeremy, well, what's the difficulty and what are the trends in marketing uh, or excuse me, in recruitment for the healthcare market? Well, it really depends. You know, there are consistent shortages right now for nurses. This is something that has plagued healthcare for the last 20 plus years. And yes, absolutely. You know, I think even from an outsider's perspective, we know that COVID has amplified the shortage of nurses in healthcare, right? But, but that holds true for almost, again, every discipline in healthcare right now. And so there's a big push now on, you know, how do we make the most of the current existing staff, whether it's a low-level tech, uh, a first-year nurse, or a physician with 15 years of experience, right? How do we make the most of, of current senior leadership and management? You know, there's a lot of people that are looking at healthcare right now from other industries and going, you know what? I think I can help. I, I think I can provide a different perspective and, and, and bring some, some new solutions to problems that we've encountered in manufacturing, in textiles, in tech, in finance, and whatever. And, and you have uh, uh, what we are seeing now is an influx of, of, of new, new blood, basically, right into the healthcare arena, offering creative solutions. You've got Amazon, you've got Walmart, you've got all these other uh, you know, huge players jumping into healthcare saying, hey, I can try. I can. I can maybe present something something different. And the same thing applies, obviously, on on the employment perspective. Guess what? 
there's not enough people, right? Where, where are these people coming from? And so we're looking at educational programs. We're looking at, you know, legislation and we're looking at, you know, our, our, our community leaders to say, hey, what can we do to produce more of these trained and talented individuals? When we look at small, rural, underserved communities that might produce, you know, one healthcare uh, executive or, or, or provider every decade, right? Well, how do we multiply that by three or four or five times where now those communities can be self-sustaining, right? Or act as a feeder for, for regional and midsize clients. So, you know, it, I think like a lot of other industries, COVID has made us really kind of look inward for solutions that, you know, have continuously been a problem, but now it's, Hey, we're forced. We have to, we have to do something, right? Yeah, I love it, Jeremy. Obviously, you're you're a forward thinker. You're a zykus. You know what's going to be happening into the future, and you're thinking about that, and and that's very important. And you know, when we think about you know when we think about PX three, and we think about the the case studies and some of the testimonials that you have, it's absolutely incredible. And in the healthcare field, I would imagine that if if I'm a provider, you know, or if I'm looking for a provider. And if I don't have the right provider, I'm missing a provider in my healthcare system. It's just costing me nothing but money. And I'm probably having a lot of headaches within my system because I don't have that provider. I'm sure the patients aren't getting the, you know, the best experience. So the patients are never going to return as well. Mm -hmm. And it seems like, you know, you can step in, Jeremy, with PX3 and handle the entire process for your clients, which is really, really awesome. And I really love that so much. Now, I know you've sliced out a little time before our our interview today. You know, we had a little chance to chat and I know you're just slammed and so many people, especially now, are are looking for PX3's advice and and expertise and placement. But before we go today, Jeremy, I wanted to talk about entrepreneurship because you mentioned something very interesting. And I know that you got your start way back in 2007. And when you were working in the industry, you had a chance to learn from two of the top professionals in the field. And I believe earlier in our conversation, you called them mentors. I believe they're probably the same people. So let's talk about mentorship as part of our Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. If you could talk to the younger entrepreneurs or the other entrepreneurs watching the show, people that maybe have a startup or people that have a successful company already existing like yours, maybe you could share the entrepreneurial journey to them and tell them how important mentorship is to becoming a great entrepreneur. Wow. What a question. <laughs> that's, that's a tough one. I wish I had a, an evening to simmer on that, Andy. <laughs> yeah, you, you definitely put me on the spot. So, you know, I think like a lot of things in life, having somebody that you can look up to, somebody that you can tap on the shoulder for advice, for guidance, somebody that's that's been there in the thick and thin of it, right? What a wonderful resource to have available. And, you know, for some of you, you're going to have to actively pursue mentorship and guidance. And that may come in the form of a professional coach. It may come with a, uh, a dedicated consultant. It may come from a, a friend or family. In my case, I was lucky that my first, you know, foray into healthcare rec- recruitment, I happened to work for a small firm, and the, the two partners at the time were dedicated to to my growth and development. But it was also my own desire, right? They can't, they couldn't force that mentorship on me. And so I'd say for for those of you that are that are you know young op- entrepreneurs or you know entrepreneurs on the up and coming, and and you're looking at well, you know how can I succeed and, and how can I take my own success to the next level? You know, mentorship is a great way to do that. If you can't find it within your internal circle or your internal business, you're going to have to find it somewhere. You know, I, I, I've been dedicated to my own personal growth, both professionally and personally for, for many, many years. And it's, and it's a, it's a constant process, right? I remember very early on in my career, maybe, I was 25, 26. I mean, this is before I even started recruiting. And, uh, you know, I thought success was a destination. I thought, man, I can't wait to achieve success. <laughs> and then I realized once I hit success, I thought, well, I got to keep going. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's no letting off that gas pedal, right? You've got to continue to push. You've got to continue to strive for success. And, 
Um, you know, I think mentors provide that. And I think an important note that maybe a lot of people might be even afraid to mention is that mentors can only take you so far, right? You've got to have that, that own desire to succeed and to continue to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. But at the same point, you have to evolve your mentorship as you continue to, to evolve. You at some point are going to outgrow your educational circle, right? A mentor is going to take you to a point where you're going to plateau and say, okay, what's next? And I remember reading about this uh, many, many years ago. There was a, a gentleman that ran a uh, Harley David's, uh, excuse me, Harley Davidson dealership, and he took this dealership to national fame and success in a short period. And eventually, he got to a point where you know he he plateaued and said, "Well, you know, I've got this great executive team beneath me, but they can't get me past this hurdle." So he cleaned shop brought all new people in and took it to the next level. And I think you have to look at mentorship as the same way. As you continue to exceed and evolve, you have to look at the, the guidance around you and see, are they going to take you to where you want to be? Are they going to continue to help you push those bounds? I love it, Jeremy. That's great advice. And that's something we haven't heard much on that question from various entrepreneurs is that you need to keep evolving with your mentorship. And that's really amazing. Jeremy, I'm so happy that you've been able to cut some time out today, you know, with your experience and passion for the business, which obviously comes out, you know, you've really proven to become a dominant player in these, in this market, this saturated market, if you will. And based on what we've read online, you know, anyone who's worked with you and your team can attest to your not only extreme knowledge and dedication, but more importantly, your relentlessness to help your clients and your candidates alike. It's really amazing. You've built a wonderful company and, and it's people like you that really kind of are the shining light that lead. And I know that there's probably some mentorship that's either happening right now or down the road where you're going to be mentoring the next generation of, of great entrepreneurs as well, Jeremy. So I wanted to thank you so much for coming on the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. This has been absolutely awesome talking about PX3, uh, the people placing people. I had to make a note of that because I just love that, uh, how that all kind of flows together with what you're doing with this efficient healthcare staffing with this unique selling proposition that you act absolutely offer extreme efficiency to your clients. Jeremy, thank you so much for coming on the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series today. It's been my pleasure. Thank you again for having me. Look forward to our next conversation, Andy.